Good day, everyone. Welcome to Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. Today's date is January 4th, 2022, first day of the new year. And Happy New Year, everybody. And this is episode 94, season four. And today I would do a special episode. I am going to talk about Betty White, and I'm going to do a tribute episode of her and talk about my memories of watching her on television. And it should be it should be sad and a lot of fun. Okay, and uh, first off, we're going to start off with a commercial. And this program is brought to you by Geritol. And here's a commercial with Betty White advertising Geritol in 1954, one of the earliest commercials she ever done on television. So here we go. Let's talk about you a little bit. How are you feeling? Are you, are you feeling as good as we feel today? I sincerely hope so. But I'd especially like to talk to you housewives and mothers, and you're really busy gals that just keep going all the time. Sometimes as you go about your daily routine, you get the feeling that you just don't have enough energy to finish out the day. Well, if you do feel that way, or anybody in your family feels that way, don't just ignore it and wait for it to go away. It's a better idea to check with your doctor. Because remember, that weak, rundown condition may be due to undernourished blood. Doctors have a special name for it. They call it iron deficiency anemia. But we call it tired blood. And to feel stronger fast, I wish you'd give Geritol a try. This is the fast-acting, high-potency tonic that we've been telling you so much about that really begins to strengthen iron-poor, tired blood in just 24 hours. That's all it takes just one day for Geritol iron to be in your bloodstream carrying strength and energy to every part of your body. In just two tablespoons, just this little bit, contains twice the iron in a pound of calf's liver. And it's good tasting, too. So if you do feel weak and run down, or if anybody in your family complains of similar problems, get Geritol, either the liquid or the tablets, at your drugstore today. You'll feel stronger fast in seven days or your money back. Just be sure that you get what you ask for, Geritol, G-E-R-I-T-O-L. Believe me, you will feel stronger fast. And two, don't forget, mothers, you can get Geritol Jr. It's just as effective for your children as regular Geritol is for you. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial. Uh, Geritol is a product that's still around. Uh, I've never used it, but uh, I don't think I am. I don't know anyone else who have used it, uh, but it was, this product was ridiculed a lot when I was growing up uh, on television shows, variety shows, you know, because it's associated with old people. And, you know, as they get older, your energy depletes, it, you know, go, you know, it sh- decreases. And uh, I heard it's very good. You know, it uh, helps your, because uh, if you have an iron deficiency, like I do, it does help a lot. But uh, I asked my doctor a long time ago if I could use it. And he said, yeah, but uh, you better stick with the B, uh, vitamin B12 shots. And I still get those every month. You know, I probably get that for the rest of my life. So that helped. And uh, I've been taking them since I was 12 years old. And that helped a lot. And because uh, I... Uh, I'm anemic, so I, I need to uh, receive the shots and also uh, eat certain foods with iron, you know, like liver. Uh, a lot of people don't like liver. I, I, I like it. I really do. It's And uh, also cereal because it has that folic acid. And uh, I love cereal. I really do. So that helps a lot. And it helps me. You know, like I said, it helps me uh, get the, gets me going and with the energy. Okay. Um, first off, I want to talk about something else. Before we get started to uh, talk about Betty White, I want to mention one thing that today uh, is the anniversary of my father's death. And he died on January 4th, 2006. It's 16 years ago today. And I still miss him. Um, He's one of those fathers that he would drive you crazy no matter what he said or did, but you still miss him. You know, he's my father and I loved him, you know, but uh, 
we never agreed on anything. He didn't like what I did, you know, and uh, later on he said, you know, do what makes you happy. You know, in the beginning, he didn't understand that, you know, and uh, a lot of parents are like that. They want, they want their children to succeed and like, and they just pick out as a, a uh, career for you, a doctor, a lawyer. I didn't want that. Not interested. So, um, but he was a good father and uh, he never took me anywhere, never took me like ball games or places, but he, he took me to his place of uh, business one time. He worked at the Conrad Hilton Hotel on Michigan Avenue in downtown Chicago, which was, that was a fun day. I liked that. So I was surprised he did that. So, and then, uh, but uh, he worked very hard. You know, he worked nights at the at the hotel. He was in room service, and he owned a couple of properties. And he always brought, and he always, we always had a roof over our heads. We had meat on, we had a meal on the table every day. He supported my mom, two of my brothers, and we, and he put us through college because he regretted because his own mother did not put send him to school. I don't, I don't understand why. And he regret, and he hated that. I almost wanted to drop out of college. But he was so angry, he told me, no, don't be end up like me. Please don't do that. I gave some thought, and uh, he was right, you know. So, and uh, that made him very happy when we, me, uh, that I and my brothers graduated from college. That, that made it made him very happy. So, uh, I miss him. I miss him. I really do. And uh, so, I. Uh, Anyway, his birthday's coming up on January twentieth, so so that's a that's a that's kind of a hard, you know. You have his death and his birthday coming up in the same month. No, I'm sorry, his birthday's February. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> Why do you think of January twentieth? It's February twentieth. Okay, uh, it's a rough morning. Anyway, okay. Uh, right now, we're going to talk about Betty White. And uh, she passed away on New Year's Eve, 2021, at the age of 99. And uh, she was going to turn 100 on January 17th, but that didn't happen. So she had 17 days to go. And they were there was a big, uh, there was some big events coming up. And I heard there was a documentary about her life, and uh, they were going to do uh, tributes on television, magazines, the whole works. They're still going to do that. They're still going to do that. So uh, we look forward to that. So I'm going to talk about her life, uh, her beginnings, and also my memories of watching her on TV. Okay. So we'll start off uh, where she was born. And uh, a lot of people know that she was born in Oak Park, Illinois, outside of Chicago. But the funny thing is she was only, she left Oak Park when she was uh, a, a little over a year old. So, <laughs> so yeah, but. She what did born, but she was raised in California, and uh, she was an only child. Um, her mother's name was Christine. Her father's name was Horace, and uh, her mother. Oh, uh, she she was half. She was her. I'm sorry. Her grandfather was Greek on her mother's side. A lot of people assume that she her mother that she was 100 percent Greek or she was half Greek. No. She was not. She's. It's only tiny, tiny, you know, uh, because her other grandfather was Danish, and uh, and the, her grandmothers were both from Canada. They were Welsh, English Welsh. So I don't know. When sometimes people exaggerate. I should know who people like that, especially Greek people. They they start one story and then it blows up. <laughs> You know, and it's it isn't true. So yeah, so she has some Greek blood. It's nice. I doubt she knew anything about cooking or anything like that. I doubt it. So she moved to. Uh, so she was born on January seventeenth, nineteen twenty-two, and then her then a year later, her family moved to Alhambra, California. That was during the uh, and later. Uh, she attended at uh, Beverly Hills High School, and then um, then I think she caught the acting bug at the at the at the school, and uh, so she did some singing and dancing, and then uh, she started working on the radio. 
Yeah, she was a radio actress. She did bit parts, you know, out in Los Angeles. And uh, she also had her own radio show called The Betty White Show. She had other shows called Name After Her. And uh, her first television appearance was in 1949 called Hollywood on Television. Believe it or not. And uh, she had her own TV shows. And uh, also there was one, uh, her, she had her first TV show, it was called Life with Elizabeth. And uh, you can find that show on DVD somewhere if you do a search on Amazon or any eBay. And uh, it ran for, let's see, it ran for three seasons. And... Uh, you know, it was one of the few women who, she had full creative control of the show. So she was a producer, and that's that's amazing. Just like Lucille Ball, you know, when she did I Love Lucy. So, and uh, she did other television appearances, you know, dramatic shows. Oh, there's so many. There's so countless ones she did. You know, she was a very busy woman, very busy woman. And then uh, she had her own talk show, also the Betty White Show. <laughs> And uh, she did that. And uh, so uh, that didn't last very long. It lasted about a year, I think, a year or two. And then she appeared on another sitcom called Date with Angels. And it was like a kind of a fantasy show in a way. And uh, according to some sources, she didn't like the show very much. She wanted to get out of it. But she, she was being very respectful and says, no, I will honor my contract and I'll stay, you know, but uh, she hated it. And that one also is on DVD somewhere, you know, so you, if you do an internet search, do a Google search, that is, you could find it. Okay. And, uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, when she lived in Oak Park, I found this photo on Twitter. Someone posted the, the apartment building where she lived, you know, with her parents and it was at 218 Pleasant Street in Oak Park. And I looked on the map. It looked like a very nice building. You know, um, someday maybe I'll take a ride and go take a look at it. And she was on the third floor, 3A. So I don't know if she visited Chicago well, when she was alive. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. I don't know. And uh, I know for one thing, she's visited and she had a, a few books published. She wrote a few books. Uh, she did a book tour, and she appeared at Marshall Fields in 1988, around the second after the second season of The Golden Girls. And uh, there was a photo on Facebook, and I, and someone took a picture of her when she was doing book signing, and she was it was at Marshall Fields, like I said before, and that that was beautiful. That really was. And uh, I don't know if she had family here still. I doubt it. I don't know. Anyway. Then she did more guest stars on television shows and then also game shows. She appeared on What's My Line, To Tell the Truth, I've Got a Secret, um, and then she appeared on Password. And that's where she met her third husband, Alan London. He was a host of the show. And uh, when the show started, he was a widower. His wife died of cancer. And he had three children. And uh, before I get into Alan London, Betty White was married before. A lot of people didn't know that. She was married twice. Um, let's see. I can get you the names of the husbands. And they were very brief. So her first husband's name was Dick Barker. And uh, he, was a, he was a pilot from the, the uh, Air Force. And they moved to Ohio. And he owned a chicken farm. And uh, the man didn't want, he just wanted a simple life. But Betty did not want that. She wanted, uh, she was a career woman. She wanted to continue with that. And uh, that, didn't, that didn't pan out. So they came back to LA and they got divorced. Then she uh, married uh, a man named Lane Allen. He was a talent agent and actor. They were married for only two years. And uh, got married in 1947, divorced in 1949. Because he wanted a family and she didn't, so that's a that's a big red flag for that. 
And uh, there were times, and then during that period, she didn't want to get married at all. And then until she appeared on Password, she fell in love with Alan London. And then they got married uh, two years later in, 19, in 1963. And uh, he proposed to her twice. And she turned him down, but finally did. And she never regretted it. And uh, so they had a long life together until Alan London died in 1981. He had uh, stomach cancer. And uh, that was sad because I remember watching that when uh, there were other hosts. I remember on Password, there was Burke Convey, the He hosted Tattletales. He took over. And I think Tom Kennedy. So uh, that was hard. And the, the show continued. You know, the game show. It's one of my favorite game shows. I love that. You know, if you see uh, reruns, sometimes they had them on the, on the Buzzer TV channel or Game Show Network, you would find them. You would see Password. They have them black and white in color. They had some fascinating guests. Uh, guest bars oh, from the 60s and 70s. Oh, I loved it. That was fun. Okay. And then uh, then we'll talk about... Uh, okay, right now I'm going to play a commercial uh, with Betty White. It's for Spray and Wash, and that's from 1976. And after that, I will talk about her, her two famous roles in television. And it's from the Mary Tyler Moore Show and Golden Girls. So here is, like I said, the 1976 commercial for Spain Wash featuring Betty White. And here we go. A big dog, a little boy, and an oily telephone pole can really mess up a new jacket. Mrs. Janet String wrote this letter to tell us about it. Tommy was miserable. He had just been awarded that football jacket. Thank goodness Spray and Wash removed that oily mess. Because a special jacket like this could never be replaced. <laughs> Not only tough stains, but everyday stains can ruin clothes too, you know. So you Spray and Wash. Get rid of the stains instead of the clothes. Okay, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial for Spay and Wash. Uh, I remember, I remember this commercial when she um, did that. Uh, she also uh, Spray and Wash was from a company called Tech Size, but I think it's been bought up by other companies. And there were other products uh, during the six, late '60s and '70s that Tech Size made. One was, I believe, Janitor in the Drum, Fantastic, and K2R. That was a spot remover. You know, and uh, I can't think of the other one. Something called Grease something. I don't know. Can't think of the top of my head. And, uh, okay. So, n next I'm going to talk about uh, her two famous roles uh, from Mary Tyler Moore Show and The Golden Girls. And for the for the Mary Tyler Moore Show, uh, she portrayed uh, Sue Ann Nevins. And uh, this was not like Betty White in real life. <laughs> I loved I loved her in that role. It was hilarious. She was hilarious. You know, she, you always saw her as very sweet, very friendly, you know, very personable, but uh, the character was not. She was man hungry. Uh, she will stab you in the back and very, uh, uh, how would I say this? Uh, she was an opportunist and she was, uh, and she was the happy homemaker and, uh, she was not on every week, you know, it was like, uh, she was a semi-regular. So there were, there were weeks when I watched the show, she wasn't there. I kind of missed her, but when she showed up, oh, she was gold. I loved, I loved her. And, uh, there were a couple of, uh, classic episodes of her and she was off. She was also after, uh, Lou Grant played by Ed Asner. Those were funny. And, uh, she always insulted people, especially, um, uh, Murray Slaughter, who played Gavin McC who was played by Matt Gavin McCloud. She did the ball jokes. <laughs> so and uh, so that was that role was beautiful. Uh, I love I love when she played that role. And uh, she was only there for three. Uh, she was only there for I think four seasons until the show ended in 1977. So, and she was good friends with Mary Tyler Moore. They were very good friends. And uh, I still watch the show. It's on DVD. It's hilarious. Uh, I love it. it, it when you start watching the first episode, you got to watch the rest to all the way at the end. It's it kind of like a soap opera in a way, you know, because they had wonderful characters, good stories, you know, funny lines, uh, you know, and Betty White made it better. She made it better. Okay. 
Next up is the Golden Girls. Now, uh, we all know the Golden Girls, and I love that. Sh- and you know what? That show is a classic. I love that show. You know, and uh, starred four women who, lived in, who shared a house in Miami. Uh, you had the classic uh, characters. You had Rose, Blanche, uh, Dorothy, and her mother, Sophia. And uh, I don't know. My favorite character was Dorothy, you know, played by B. Arthur. And she played uh, she, she played on Maud, which I love that show. So I like Maud better in that show. You know, but she was great in Golden Girls. But Golden Girls is is a phenomenon, and uh, it's, people still watch it to this day. I love it. I have it on DVD. Uh, I don't watch it all the time because I don't get tired. You know, so I watch another show first. You know, another TV show, and then if I get tired, that then go out and then watch like, for example, Golden Girls. Anyway, and her Betty White's character was Rose Nyland. She lives in Saint Olaf, Minnesota. Doesn't exist there. And uh, she didn't play like the Sue Ann Nevins type. She wasn't man hungry. She was kind of a ditz. And she said some, she told goofy stories from Minnesota and all these crazy recipes she cooked. And, but she had a good heart. Her character was kind and generous. And, uh, you know, probably the one of the most sensible people at times, you know, but the Dorothy character was like that, but she was tough. You know, she was from New York, we expect, just like her mother. <laughs> and the show uh, started from 1985 through 1992, and then they started in the Golden Palace. That was a, the sequel, only for one, one year. Uh, B. Arthur did not appear, but she made a guest star. And uh, there was a... I remember one classic episode. Uh, it doesn't really matter with Betty. It didn't wasn't related to Betty White, but it, it was with Sophia, where she got a part time job working at a fast food restaurant. And she came home and she demand and the her and her coworkers demanded the manager that she get more breaks. You know, like uh, you know, but uh, the manager was like a tyrant. Didn't made him too hard. And then. Uh, Sophia said to the girls, you know, we need more time to, you know, for uh, for our break, like 10, 15 minutes. And and Dorothy said, well, what's wrong with that? Why do you need that long? And and, and she said, are you kidding? It takes too long to drop our, you know, our, drop our, our pantyhose to go to the bathroom in the stall. <laughs> when she said that, it was hilarious. I love it. So it's a wonderful show. It really is. And uh, Betty White played it in perfection. You know, all the women had won Emmys, you know, for their acting. So that's that's good. Okay. And then uh, when I found out the news that, she, that Betty White died, it was sad, you know, and uh, it was very sad. So she was with us forever, you know, and uh, whenever you turn on the TV, there she was. There, there she was. And she was a great animal lover. She loved dogs love dogs, love animals. And she had her own TV show called Pet Set and where a celebrity would bring a pet, a dog, a cat, usually that. And then uh, they sat down with Betty White and they talked, you know, and it's on DVD right now, you know, and I I heard about that show. I really did. So, um, you know, that's, uh, it's too bad. Um, I really loved her. She was a great performer, great lady. Okay. That'll be all for today for Betty White. Uh, I'm glad you can join me. Thank you for listening for this special episode. Um, this is Pico Stanis with uh, Vanishing Congoland Stories, the podcast, episode 94, season four. Uh, I will probably do another episode very soon, maybe Thursday or Saturday. I got to figure out, find out, uh, figure out what I like to discuss. But, you know, it's the new year, so I have a lot of topics. And, uh, a lot of people have suggested um, they send me messages or commented on my social media accounts. You know, please do this. Uh, please do an episode of this. Please do an episode of that. I'll see. I have a couple in mind. So uh, we shall see. Okay. And uh, so, we, you know, it's just January. we got plenty of time. Okay. So thank you for joining me. 
and I mentioned that before. And uh, I hope everyone have a great day. And uh, bye bye for now for me. And here's Ray Rayner saying bye bye for now. Take care, everybody. So long. We have to go. Bye bye bye.